This is the first of a few videos having to do with evolution and the process of natural selection. The first thing I think it's important to talk about is what we mean when we say a theory, because we talk about the theory of evolution. Um, and we had already talked in class about how evolution really isn't a theory, it's more of a fact. Um, what a theory is in science is an explanation of observations that have been made. There have been some, some data collected, we've seen some things, and we come up with an explanation for it. That's what a theory is. Um, theories are not fact, but are strongly supported by data. So we're going to talk about evolution. Evolution is a fact, and we talked about that in class already, about how things change, and it's a fact that things are changing. But the theory that we're going to talk about is actually this idea of how um, things are changing. So we know things are changing. The question is how. How does change come about? And that's what um, this theory that we're going to talk about, how, how that comes into play. So in class, we talked a little bit about this man, Charles Darwin. He's the man behind um, everything that we understand about evolution. Actually, not everything, but a lot of what we understand. Um, he developed this theory that he came up with over 100 years ago. <clears throat> and of course, now we have new technology. We have DNA technology, we have medical technology, and with this new technology, this theory that he came up with is even stronger than ever. So new evidence that we have, new technology that we develop, it's all still pointing to this idea that Charles Darwin came up with over 100 years ago. So who was Charles Darwin? He was a naturalist. That's someone who likes to go out in nature and... Um, take pictures. Of course, at that time, they didn't really take pictures. He drew sketches, and he wrote down things, and he collected specimens. Um, he was interested in um, working as a naturalist, so he took a job on a world voyage. He went around the world, and he went on a ship called the HMS Beagle. So you may have heard of this ship, and he went out on this, um, this ship for a world voyage, and I think he was out there for five years traveling. He visited many places, including islands in the South Pacific. The most famous islands he visited were the Galapagos Islands, some of the first of the Europeans that actually visited the Galapagos Islands. And he, as he went on his way, wrote down everything he saw. He collected specimens, he drew pictures, and he cataloged or kept track of all of these things. Here's a sketch of the HMS Beagle. It might have looked something like that, similar to that. Um, this was um, a sketch made of the ship in the Straits of Magellan. It was Darwin's experiences as a naturalist on this ship, a five-year expedition around the world that led up his t to his life work on evolution. Here's a map showing some of his voyage. Okay, so he, he started here in England. <clears throat> he traveled down to um, South America, all the way around near the Falkland Islands, all the way back up, and then across the Pacific, coming around here to Australia, um, all through the Indian Ocean, around the southern tip of Africa, back to South America, and then back home to England. So he went quite a long distance along the way, writing down everything he saw, keeping track of everything. Now understand at that time, um, many Europeans had not been to these parts of the world. They didn't even know about the organisms that lived there, the different kinds of birds and animals that lived there. So everything he was writing down and drawing pictures of, a lot of it was new to people. That is, people in Europe it was new to. So while on the voyage, he saw and he documented many new animals and plants that had not seen, been seen before. And making these observations, it gave him some new ideas about how organisms change and adapt. So some new organisms, maybe some that looked similar to those he, he knew about in Europe, but not exactly, and they were different. And um, so, some of this got him to thinking. He also knew about how you could breed animals and plants for a specific trait, like breeding dogs. And he supposed something like that might be happening in nature. So um, he called this natural selection. He, he said that nature was selecting for specific traits, just like we do when we breed dogs or we breed cows to get particular traits that we want, like more milk, or maybe we want um, a particular color of dog, or maybe we want a dog that ha has a particular personality, a particular um, disposition, so that we can use it for whatever we want. Um, 
he said maybe nature was doing that same kind of thing. So here's an example of that. Um, the original dogs were actually the wolf, and humans, through long periods of time and, and selective breeding, we converted these wolves into all the different breeds of dog that we now see. Um, large ones, small ones, different colors, different types of fur, and very different personalities. And we, we, we developed that just from these wolves. And so Darwin said, well, maybe that's what's happening, except we're not picking. Nature is picking instead. So there are four principles of Darwin's theory. And if you write nothing else down today from this lesson, please write this stuff down. The four principles of Darwin's theory. If you understand these four principles, you got it. You understand it. The first principle is that organisms have natural variation of traits. So naturally, people are a little bit different from each other. Animals are a little bit different. Plants are a little bit different. There, there's, there's none that are exactly alike. And here's an example. This is a particular species of, um, gosh, I, th I guess it's like a clam or a snail. And this is one particular species, and it can come in all this whole range of colors. So you see there's one that's here that's a little bit bluish, and then there's one that's reddish, and then there's some that have um, other striping patterns. But these are all the same species of snail. This is natural variation of traits. So this is true in all different kinds of organisms. This is just a fact. There are different variations of traits. You might ask what causes these natural variations. The first is sexual reproduction. When, when two organisms join um, together and form a new organism, they're combining all of their different genes and all of their different um, characteristics to form a whole new combination. And that's why you look a little maybe like your parents, but you don't look exactly like your parents. The second is something called mutation. This is a random change that happens in genes. Okay, Some mutations aren't bad. We think of mutation being bad, but some mutations actually could be good. The second um, principle of the theory is that organisms have a lot of babies. This isn't true for all organisms, but for many organisms, they make many, many more babies than will survive. Okay, For example, I'll give you two examples. One, this is, this is a flower known as a dandelion. Each one of these little things is a seed. And if you're familiar with these, of course, you, you blow and the seeds blow away. So these seeds naturally will blow away. Even if you don't blow on them, the wind will make them blow away. And, of course, not every single one of those seeds will grow into a new dandelion plant. So some aren't going to survive. Some will find a place to grow and will grow, and some of them will not. Um, here's an example, another example from an animal. This is a clownfish, like Nemo. And you can see all these little orange specks are eggs that this fish has laid. Look at them, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of eggs. Not every single one of those eggs will hatch, and when they hatch, not all of the babies will survive. So many organisms will have too many babies. They'll have more babies than will survive. The third principle of Darwin's theory, there is competition in the environment, and I don't think I have to explain that too much because we all understand about competition, competition in the environment. There's going to be competition for food, competition for water, competition for some place to sleep at night. There's competition for who's going to get the, the mate, who's going to get the female, or who's going to get the male that they, that they want. There's going to be competition to keep away from predators. Um, an example here is the watering hole in Africa. Notice there's limited water. Everybody has to share. Everybody has to get in there. And so there's competition. There's competition in the environment. Finally, the fourth principle of the theory and this is really the heart of natural selection. This is the heart of Darwin's theory. He said that those that have the best traits will survive. So those that have the variation of traits that are best for that moment in time, for that place in, and in space, they will survive. And when they survive, they will reproduce, and they will have more babies, and their babies will have their good traits. The rest of them are going to die. Okay, so that over time, that population will have more traits that are better for that environment. If the environment changes, the whole game changes. But for this case, it's just for that particular environment. Let me give you an example. Here is a cheetah chasing um, a little antelope. And of course, the faster antelope don't get eaten. Or maybe the antelope that hides doesn't get eaten. 
the cheetah that's faster gets to eat. The cheetah that's slower doesn't get to eat because it can't catch its food. Okay, and so over time, the cheetahs got faster and the, um, the little antelopes got faster and smarter. Here's another example. These are some, um, they're called, they're, I can't remember the name of them, but they're, it's on Christmas Island. And these are the little red crabs on Christmas Island. And they all hatch out and they migrate to the sea all at the same time. And the roads get completely covered in these crabs. Now, do you suppose every single one of those crabs is going to make it to the sea? Probably not. Some of them will get eaten by maybe a seagull or something. Some of them will get run over by a car because they're in the road. And those that make it to the sea are the strongest and the best at this point in time. And they're the ones that will survive, and they're the ones that will have babies, and they will make it too. So that's the heart of Darwin's theory. Now understand natural selection occurs very slowly, okay? But simpler forms of natural selection can be seen in a shorter period of time. And we'll talk about those differences, those different conditions and shorter periods of time, examples of that um, later on. But for right now, I want you to understand the principles of the theory and kind of a little bit about Darwin. So that's all for this lesson.